tucked away in the southwestern corner of Trinidad is the Beach Camp Facility, located within Palo Seco Village and overlooking the waters of the Columbus Channel. Beach Camp is home to the Cox Football Academy. An estimated 300 children, ages 3 to 17, are enrolled in this footballing coaching school, founded in 1981 by head coach Dennis Cox. In December 2023, Maria Caffey Lewis of Sizzle Island had the honor of visiting Cox Footballing Academy's Beach Camp training grounds and spoke with head coach Dennis Cox, coach and trainer Sherland Beckles, and physiotherapist Sherland Maitland. It was a doubly special occasion as an under-13 contingent from Jamaica's Genesis Football Academy was visiting Trinidad for a friendly game against Cox. We therefore also had the privilege of speaking with Genesis's head coach and founder, Andrew Edwards. What has made you such a visionary leader? <laughs> well, I think I was a spiritual person, first of all. And you know, um, you know, uh, you know, they say with, with prayer, everything is, is, is not impossible. So, you know, I pray a lot and, you know, it just lead me to what I'm continuing doing for the last 40 years. That's excellent. Tell us what has sustained your club for 40 years. First of all, all praises to the Almighty, without the Almighty. We, the club could not have um, hosted the, the opportunity that we have, the, the opportunity that was presented to us. Um, over the years, what sort of supports have you had from you know the adults, etc., for the children? Well, we, the support we get is you know in the community. You know, um, people always like they are with the with the kids in the community there, with the parents, and you know a few well wishes. We have get some lots of support. Now I ask uh, Mr. Cox, I want to ask you, because you were trained by him, what do you think has sustained the academy for all these years? I feel it's the mindset of the director mm -hmm. and the aim that he is going with to help develop children. They will find more children coming here because we instill discipline. Mm -hmm. And everything we deal with is positive, mm -hmm. nothing on the negative side. We always try to help them in every way, yeah. not only in football, also in school. Right. Is it just the physical or is it also nutrition? It deals with everything. Uh -huh. It deals with everything. Yeah. Everything. The nutrition, the, the, the rest, the food. Mm -hmm. Injuries. Anything you need with what with, with um physical? Yeah. Injury? Yeah. How do you keep track of the physical well being of the of three hundred children? Right. Each year. Mm. Each was each um each each group yeah. of the time to train. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's here um um one year the girls the girls choose my baby. Boys, right. Saturday. Mm -hmm. So we have to do different days. Huh? Yeah. The timing of the, of the age groups. So good. It says broken down smaller, so, so you could tr tr keep keep, keep track. Yeah. That is so good. My 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 portfolio is very important. Was that? My portfolio is very important. Yeah, it is extremely important yeah, it is hard. because without that, the children can't perform yes. properly. Tell us about the club. Tell us about the club and your background with the club. Okay, so um, Genesis Football Academy uh, was founded uh, in January 2016 um, by my wife and myself. And um, it is largely inspired by our own children, but also um, by the need to provide the kind of access to opportunity for kids in the rural part of Jamaica from the tree here, which is the central part. Um, we are in Mandeville proper. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we try to 
spread our wings to the adjacent parishes of man of, of Clarendon and St. Louis. Right. What prompted that decision and how has that positively impacted the children? Well, being as a young man, I never get the opportunity to travel overseas, you know, mm -hmm. you're always hearing and, and seeing on television and so forth, you know, so, you know, um, I decided that to give the children an opportunity because, you know, traveling, you know, bring a lot of knowledge to the kids, the children, that there's a, there's a whole world outside there to be ex waiting to be explored. Mm -hmm. So I decided that to give the children an opportunity to have travel. Many, many countries, you know, first go to that. We have traveled places like Brazil, mm -hmm. Canada, US, even just recently Spain, mm -hmm. and, and various other countries. Now, how have you found, because today you all have a game against Jamaica. Yeah. How have you, what is your opinion on the international, regional, international collaborations at the club and the children that they've been exposed to? How has that helped them grow as well? Well, as I say, it's a developing progress because mm -hmm. we've been to Jamaica recently mm -hmm. and I was amazed how the children combine together, you swear they know each mm -hmm. other a long time. Right. When you go away, you get that welcome. Mm -hmm. You get that feeling that these people accept you, the treat you as this. Yeah. And the combination that it was overwhelming. Right. And it's about learning because their lifestyle of football will be different to us. Right. Everybody don't have the same way of training. Mm -hmm. So I myself learned from their mm -hmm. programs that we saw that they did with our players and then we did program with their players. Right. What is it like um, in terms of the holistic approach to the coaching? How have you experienced that, especially with this age group? Um, that it does it go beyond the physical training? Do you also have to deal with like mental, emotional, psychological um, preparedness for them? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What is that like for a coach? So, when you are into football and you spend time to understand mm -hmm. and what or, or what is required to develop players properly, then you recognize that there are four critical pillars to the development. Of um, football players, you know, I would say athletes generally. Mm -hmm. So there is a physical preparation, there is yeah. a technical, tactical preparation, mm -hmm. there is a psychological preparation, mm -hmm. and there is also the social preparation. Right. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and in our environment, we seek to meet all of those needs for the mm -hmm. kids. And actually, coming here to Trinidad is actually one of those um, opportunities that we thought was very important to. Um, affect the psychology and the social side of the game for the right. kids in a very positive way. Okay. And we believe that that particular objective was met in no uncertain manner. If you have a situation with a child who doesn't have the nutritional, they don't have the economic means to have the proper nutrition at home, what is the coach, this coaching school's Not a problem. Uh -huh. Not a problem at all. Mm -hmm. But we for the children. Yeah. And if only child wants a coach, Coach man, next one is you know what I mean? Yeah. Why is football, in your opinion, the beautiful game? Well, from my experience, you know, football is life. Football brings people together. Yeah. Most important, and it is a universal language between football. Because no matter what language you you know you, you speak with that ball, mm -hmm. you know automatically that language just you know open up and everybody understand what they're supposed to do and enjoy. Now, which player in this world do you think, whether dead or alive, has played the most beautiful game? I, without a doubt, I say Pele. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Anybody modern of modern times, you think it comes close to him in terms of their football? Well, the, the closest I see to Pelé is Ronaldo. Which one? Um, Brazilian or the Portuguese? No, the Brazilian. The, yeah. Without a doubt. That's my brother's favorite. for the future of football, not only in Jamaica, but for the Caribbean region? You know, um, that's a very deep question. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. You know, but um, generally speaking, I think um, 
certainly in Jamaica, we, we, we need to see a greater impact and effort put into grassroots football mm -hmm. because um, I think I'm in safe territory in saying that um, we are not doing really enough to help the kids in Jamaica realize their dreams. Okay. Um, if you if you look at the makeup of our national teams in Jamaica lately, you realize that both on the men's side and the women's side, it is comprised um, in large measure of players who are from the diaspora. And while while we have no objection to diaspora players mm -hmm. representing the country, mm -hmm. what I am actually saying in this moment is that we need to see that the, 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 the authorities are doing their part to give the kids in Jamaica, those who were born and bred in Jamaica, mm -hmm. um, an equal opportunity yeah. to, to, to access this environment. So I yeah. think that is missing right now. And that's one of the reasons why we're doing Genesis. Um, and yeah, we hope that with, with, with time and, and, and quality work and inputs, we'll be able to get one or two kids through those doors. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Oh, I wish you all the best with it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's all about being positive. Mm -hmm. Knowing what you want, what you want to achieve. You gotta work hard for it. You gotta develop yourself. You gotta put out hard work. Nothing don't come easy, but you must learn to balance your schoolwork and the football. The both goes hand in hand. Yeah. Because if they do it tomorrow, you're a very good footballer mm -hmm. and the education level low. Yeah. Something come and happen to you, what you're falling back on. True. So you must be able to balance the both in order to develop yourself. Great advice. You gotta be aware. Mm -hmm. When you use it easiest, Fall apart. Mm -hmm. Right, and um, I know one thing I know when our, when our players here do, do this thing, we have a lot of these kids. Right, right. And if I'm, I'm push Cox, push Beckles, mm -hmm. myself, push mm -hmm. Dennis, this can I? Mm -hmm. And so if you have a lot of order, right. I'm to put our future. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. What is your hope for this group of students for their future? Um, you know, um, the, the, the general idea behind what we do at Genesis is to basically provide opportunities for the kids to reach their optimal potential. Right. So if that is being a football player, then we want to be a part of that process. Mm -hmm. If it is for them to become involved in the sporting area that means, mm -hmm. like through media, medicine, legal, right. Referring, coaching, you name it. Mm -hmm. We want to be a part of that journey. Right. And if, if it is just recreational and then they want to use that to develop other aspects of their life socially mm -hmm. and so on, then yeah. we are glad to be a part of that. Process. Okay. But at the end of the day, we want to be proud to be able to say we were a part of your journey. You know, right. We, we contributed to the man and woman that they will become. Okay. And so it's not about them necessarily becoming professional mm -hmm. players. Uh, we would love for that to happen in some of them for sure. Yeah. And I think we have a few who have that ambition mm -hmm. and we hope we can inspire them mm -hmm. to work hard at that ambition and realize it. Yeah. You know, but generally speaking, we just want them to become really good human beings, um, you know, understand the values of hard work, dedication, mm -hmm. discipline, commitment, you know, honesty and stuff like that. Yeah. What message would you like to give to your students and other young people looking on at this video? Whatever you do. <laughs> Put the Almighty first. Mm -hmm. Believe in yourself. You know, listen to your parents. Most important, listen to your parents, and you know, love what they're doing. Yeah. Is there a sport better than football in your view? No, football is the number one sport. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks. All right.